I just have about a two minute long exhortation. Uh, more, more, more. Last time I got up here, I came up with 15 pages of notes. Oh. That didn't go well. Today I only had two pages. <laughs> um, so yesterday I was preparing, I was making this homemade cake from scratch because I told everyone that we were having a Valentine's potluck party today and to <laughs> bring some food. So uh, I believe Jerry and my wonderful sister-in-law Marie brought like barbecue ribs or something of that sort. Um, wow, yeah. Lynn bought all these groceries and Jerusha has made a whole uh, spaghetti dinner and uh, anyway i was making this cake which it was i don't know why i chose that recipe it had way too many steps you know <laughs> do this do this then mix it together <laughs> i dirtied like just about every dish we have in the kitchen um, and and i'll give abby all credit for washing those dishes um <laughs> but as i was there mixing this stuff together i started thinking about how in times of emergency in times of famine in times of war in times of tragedy the um the pre-made the pre-packaged the processed food is a great miracle right uh the the box mixes the the bagged things the canned things the dried things right all the things in the in the middle aisles of the grocery store right those things are awesome if you're stationed in another country or you're dropping supplies for people suffering from a flood or something like that. So they're awesome. Um, but when we're at home, when we're in times of peace, when we're in times of abundance, um, that is when we have to engage the fresh, the natural, the organic right? And so I was thinking about how if all we were to eat for our Valentine's party potluck was just uh, the pre-packaged, the, the flour, the, the sugar, and those things, right? That would eventually lead to poor health. So it has to be mixed in with Jersey's spaghetti and Marie's ribs and all those things to be balanced out correctly. And so I was thinking about how with us these days in the 21st century in 2024, um, we have a tendency, or at least my, my personal experience has been um, that our relationships turn into nothing but texting, messaging, occasional phone calls if you're lucky, uh, but mainly texting, some photos, uh, video chats if you're lucky, um, if that friend really likes you. Um, so, but those things are wonderful if someone's in a different country, right? For example, when Jerry and Marie were going through their courting process, I think they were in touch, right, through all those means for like a year or something, a long time, right? But now they're together now they can be at peace right now it can be natural and organic mm -hmm. so i just want to encourage you today to um when you're at home and things are going well engage the people around you right engage in a natural organic way see people in person mm. make eye contact into their eyes make physical touch to their skin reach out and hug them. Yeah. You'll notice that when you're reading the um, the Gospels, all you got to do is open the Bible and read the four Gospels about Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you're going to read about a hundred times, Jesus reached out his hand and touched someone. Jesus reached out and touched his ear. Jesus reached out and touched his eyes. Um, everybody who passed by said, Jesus, please touch me, please touch me, please touch me. Uh, they brought somebody to him to touch him. Um, the power is in your hands. Luke 4, 40 says, Now when the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him, that's Jesus, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. So I want you to think, especially this Valentine's week, about the power that is in your hands. Um, you need to use that power. 
So I, I worked very shortly for Arthur Murray um, Dance Studios, uh, only a few months, less than a year. Um, but one issue that kept occurring um, in this setting is that students would always end up having feelings for their teachers because you're in a setting where you're intimately touching someone for an extended period of time and no one or most people are not receiving that type of touch or personal interaction, uh, eye contact from pretty much anyone. And so I want you to think about how powerful your touch is and what that means to people. So this Valentine's week, consider not just sending a card, not just sending a text. Um, if you're single, not just thinking about, well, one day when I meet the hot bikini model, well, one day when I meet that hot guy with a good job, um, or whatever it is, whatever your fantasy is, um, instead of thinking one day when I meet friends that are cool enough uh, for me to want to engage with them, consider where God has planted you right now and the people that he's placed in your life around you right now and think about how you can engage them naturally and organically. Um, if you think about the highest end restaurants, you know, why are they so expensive? Why are they so fancy? Well, part of it is Oh my gosh, our ingredients are fresh. Our ingredients are organic. Uh, we have a garden here on the premises. We have a private gardener, okay, who puts our stuff together. This water is fresh. It's It's been running down the mountains, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> even our cat, even our cat, if you just give him water in a bowl, no, 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 no. He doesn't want to drink any still stagnant water. He wants you to turn on a drip of water, whether it's in the sink or in the bathtub. He knows when that water is fresh. And the same thing with us. So I would encourage you to consider, don't just live in survival mode. Don't live in emergency mode. If somebody's up the street 10 minutes and you have a car and you have money for gas, consider seeing that person face to face. Uh, consider... Um, like I said, you don't want to live in a constant state of survival mode. And part of survival mode is I can't actually reach or receive anything in person. Everything is from a distance. Okay, so engage people. Um, so there's power in your hug. There's power in your touch. There's power in your eye contact. There's power in actually seeing, acknowledging, noticing people. Uh, another story from Arthur Murray. <laughs> um, there was a girl who, or a woman, who got brought in for a job position. And when she came in for her initial interview, and I was standing there, um, she didn't look at me. She didn't make eye contact, she didn't nod, she didn't smile. She acted as if I did not even exist, even though she was standing within about three feet of me for, you know, however long it was, 15 minutes or something, talking and chatting with the other people next to me. So you don't know how meaningful something is until somebody robs you of that yeah. respect and kindness yeah. until you've been robbed of it you don't know how meaningful it is and how bad it feels when you're not receiving it so I would encourage you today to not put yourself into if you're single don't put yourself into relationships with people who relegate you to um, that emergency mode that survival mode of I'm 10 or 15 minutes up the street but I'm not gonna see you face to face, I'm not gonna talk to you, I'm not gonna take you out on a date, right? Uh, be with those people, engage the people that God has put in your life, in your vicinity, whether that's at work or at church or neighbors or uh, even just people you see at the grocery store. My mother said the other day that, um, I don't know if it was 2020 or 2021, but sometime during the time that all the propaganda was telling people to stay indoors and don't go out and don't go near anyone, um, that she had spoken to 
a woman in the grocery store, she actually made eye contact with her and said, you know, hello or whatever it was, happy things, Merry Christmas or something. And she said, the woman was so shocked uh, that she couldn't believe that someone was even speaking to her, making conversation, being friendly, being nice. She looked like she was about to cry. So I just want you to think today, um, God has placed you in the place where you are right now for a reason. Um, he's put the people in your life that are in there for a reason. And so don't just think about, well, 20 years ago I used to have friends and we used to see face to face. Maybe 10 years from now I'll have friends and we'll see each other <laughs> face to face. But consider who's in your life and appreciate them right now. Drive to see them right now. Tell them you love them right now. I actually had a guy um, who I was, I guess, had a good friendship with or whatever for a while, and it ended badly, um, very, very badly. And he reached out to me over a decade later, and he wrote me a message about, I love you, and um, you're the only woman who I've ever been able to have um, good conversation with, and I've enjoyed every single moment of it, you know, and you have no <laughs> idea how much I really cared for you. And that was over a decade later, you know, but, you know, we were friends for several years, but when he knew me, he never said, I love you. He never said, you're my friend. So what I want you to think about is to give the friends in your life right now, give them their flowers and not just tell them you're my friend and I love you, but give them their touches and give them their hugs. There's a famous quote, I had to look it up. It's from Virginia Satir. I don't know if that's the correct way to say it. <laughs> Virginia Satir, apparently she's a pioneer in the area of marriage and family therapy. And one of her famous quotes is, we need four hugs a day for survival, right? So that survival mode is four hugs a day. Wow. And that's what most of us have been living on at least since 2020. We need eight hugs a day for maintenance, right? So that's just if you want to keep it even... If you want to keep it even keel in your life, eight hugs. We need 12 hugs a day for growth. So if you want to thrive and flourish in your life, that means 12 hugs, 12 meaningful touches per day. So I'd like to see myself flourish. I'd also like to see you flourish. And uh, together we can make that happen. So take that into consideration this um valentine's day luke 6 19 says and all the crowd sought to touch him that's jesus and he healed and power uh came out from him and he healed them all so think today about christ said everything that i'll do you will do greater greater and not only did he give us the power to forgive people of their sins but he also gave us the power to touch people and that power will come out of us not just to ma manipulate them for different purposes, but uh, to heal, to, to cause them to thrive, to cause them to flourish. So I pray all of you have a wonderful uh, Valentine's week, and uh, we'll be here enjoying our little potluck party. Paraplegic says he needs that healing touch. Paraplegic says he needs some healing touch. So anybody around there? <laughs> And Gary Wren has his brothers in the hospital. So, and Elizabeth's dad is and Elizabeth's father's in the hospital. Yeah, okay. And we're still praying for Copper when her mother passed. And uh, Copper Barrett, her mother passed away recently. So, there's a lot of people <clears throat> hurting and suffering for different reasons. So, um, consider as part of the body of Christ, as my dad always likes to show the picture, as part of that body, you need to. Think about the different people who are hurting. Like he said, you can't take a chunk out of even just a small chunk of skin without it bleeding, right? You're going to be in severe pain. I found that out the other day when I almost got gave myself a nubbins. <laughs>
dicing uh, some onion. So take that into consideration for the people who are around you. Uh, let's pray. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful Sunday morning. Thank you for the amazing uh, message by Dr. J about how uh, wonderful love and romance and sex and uh, spiritual intimacy are. And Lord, I just ask for all those right now who are suffering in the body of Christ right now, um, who may feel alone, who may be at a distance from others. Lord, we send um, as much love and blessing as we can through these airwaves. <laughs> and we ask for your healing touch to come and comfort them and to convey our love for them, to convey our friendship for them, to convey our desire to reach out and see them, our desire to hug and touch them, our desire to come and visit them and to support them in every way possible. So Lord, we just thank you for um, comforting our hearts. And Lord, I just ask you to help each one of us to be mindful of the people who are in our lives right now and uh, not look for the wonderful people that we want to associate ourselves with to increase our social value, but instead to look at the least of these among us everywhere we go, whether at Bojangles or Food Lion uh -huh. or uh, across the street. Father, yeah. that you would help us to see people with the eyes that you see people with as your creation and as people who will be in... Um, in your heavenly kingdom, like the poor beggar that was at the gate, uh, he will be in the bosom of Abraham. And so we just ask that you would help us to see people as you see them and to reach out and to acknowledge and to serve and to help and to make that eye contact. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Uh, amen. We'll see you next week. Same great place, same great time. One thirty p.m. Have a great Valentine's week, everybody. Love. All right. Love. 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 Love.